Today we're going to look at how to make objects move. Up to this point we've talked about how to create basic parts and assemblies, but what happens if you want to make the assemblies more realistic and have them actually move? So we're going to use a hybrid project. Uh, we're going to use some sample parts that came from a project Lead the Way uh, Arbor Press. We're going to design some new parts along the way uh, for this particular press. And we're going to show you how to make uh, the spur gear, the rack, the rack pad, and the handles all interconnect and uh, work well. So I've popped up many of the drawings that have been created and we're going to drag and drop these onto the assembly. Now we could also use the place button to place objects from the directory. In both cases they work just extremely well. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag and drop the screw. And we're going to go ahead and do the bearing plate, the gear cover plate, the rack pad, the rack, and the spur gear. What's missing is the actuator shaft and we're going to just design a new one uh, as we get moving. But this will give us the basic objects that we need because we're going to design a new handle system. So let me go ahead and minimize that. So now we've got the basic parts that we're going to utilize to create the assembly. Now we need to be aware of how these different parts go together. So as we look for the column, this particular plate is going to be on uh, this side of the column. This plate will be on the opposite side. The spur gear will be in the middle of the column, okay, in the middle of the column. And then what will happen is we'll create a shaft and a handle system for that shaft. The rack actually rides in the slot here up in front. And so we'll adjust and coordinate those and the rack pad goes inside the hole of the rack. So we'll start to use some basic assembly uh, methods and show you some of the techniques to help you uh, ensure that you're using the correct um, technique and tools for assembly. So the first thing that most people do is we'll start to do the constraint tool and we'll constrain objects together and we can uh, easily do it and, and people overuse the uh, the insert constraint but for the case of the rack pad and the rack the insert command is the appropriate command because I want the edge that's now highlighted in blue to be firmly placed against the edge of the the edge of the the rack here and I can apply that and I'm going to cancel because I'm not going to create any new constraints at this point outside of that but many people overuse that but when you're inserting objects into other objects it's appropriate too many times we'll have people use the insert command for um, items like this bearing plate. But realistically you don't want to use the insert command because you need to align the holes for fastening. So for the bearing plate, what we need to do is align the hole first, then we can work on the surface for alignment. So we can align by two different holes and to place it on the surface. Or I can align it based on the center line of the opening, which is also a good move to do. That will guarantee if I align it in the center line of the opening and one of the holes, that will guarantee that the hole positions are consistent and are exactly where they need to be since this will be writing uh, centered in that space. 
So I'll start by doing a center dimension across the center hole. And I'll do the same thing with the opening that it needs to be at and apply it. Well, the problem is, is that it's not in the right spot. So I'm going to cancel. And one of the nice things is, is that I can now grab this particular object and move it. Canceling out of the constraint option allows me to move the objects. Let me go ahead and flip it around and continue the constraint process. So I'm going to go ahead and, and constrain this surface to the face of the column. And again, I can cancel it. I can't pull it away now. But what I can do is change the visibility. Now that I've added that constraint, it's going to be stuck to that surface. Well, how am I going to actually see to align the holes? Well, I can rotate them. But we have a problem, don't we? Or do we? Are the holes aligned? Yep, they are. Because if you look inside this one, I can see threads, I can see threads. And if I pan here, I can see threads in that opening too. So aligning the holes is important. And I'll do that through that same center line command. So I'll select the center line of the hole and the center line of the plate and align them. So it's really important to make sure that everything lines up and that we have the appropriate hole positions. And it's really hard to see when things are all gray. So let's go ahead and change the material here and change some colors. We'll make this blue. We'll make this one orange. Just to mix it up a bit. We'll make the spur gear a different color. Again, realistically, not going to happen. However, to make it easier to see how all the pieces come together, we'll make these all work. Okay, so we now have a cornucopia of different colors. And I've got the one plate. Let me go back to my base view. The base view is always the home view. So now I've got the spur gear and I've got the plate for the opposite side. Okay, so the plate for the opposite side, just like the other plate, is based on hole position and centers. So I'm going to use a constraint, use the center line of the two surfaces, apply it, cancel, grab it by left mouse clicking holding down, and this time I'm going to align the holes next. and then I can do the face. So now the two plates are fastened to the column. But what about the spur gear? That goes inside. So what I can do with the spur gear is position the spur gear in alignment with the centerline holes you are aware that the ability of right mouse clicking on an object and turning the visibility off. So I can select an object, right mouse click it, and turn the visibility off. And the object is still there, I just can't see it. But I need to take the spur gear and align the spur gear up with a center line. Now the spur gear is inside the other. And so theoretically, if we look from the top, there's going to be space between each one of these. Okay, They're not going to touch 100%. And so what we need to do is do a surface to surface with a slight offset so we have a little bit of a space. And so for that to happen, what I'm going to do is go back to home, move the spur gear. Since it's only on the center, I can't 
uh, move it off to the side, I can just slide it. So I'm going to go ahead and do surface. To surface. But I'm going to add an offset. Point 0.1 is too much. Sixteenth of an inch looks pretty good. How can we look? Let's look and see. Sixteenth of an inch is too big. Let's go with a thirty second. Thirty seconds getting better. Let's go point zero one eight seven five. So point zero one eight seven five will give us almost equal distance. I'm just eyeballing it. Now we could we measure it? Yes. We could actually measure the distances and make them equal. I can measure the opening space between the two and then from there determine what the value should be for that location. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn our column back on. So now the spur gear is in the column where it needs to be. So the spur gear turns inside the column. doesn't move, but it turns up and down, which is exactly what we want it to do. But how am I going to create a shaft? Well, the shaft that I'm going to create is going to be based on the spur gear along with the outside bearing covers or the gear cover plates. So we're going to create a shaft about this diameter and in the center we're going to go ahead and um, put a keyway in. And that keyway or that positive drive mechanism is used on that spur gear for the gear to properly uh, work. So, first things first, let's go ahead and turn off the visibility of the bearing plate. Take a look at the front view. And we can see the spur gear, the orange piece is just the cutout of the keyway. So you notice that the keyway does not go through the cover plates. The keyway is just in the center of the shaft. So let's create a shaft. So we're going to go up here to create a new component. We'll call this shaft. Choose OK. And it's going to be based on the face of the spur gear. So let's just choose the face of the spur gear. So now I've got a sketch on it. We'll project the geometry. And I'll project all the geometry. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and extrude it. What are we going to extrude? We're going to extrude the cylinder. But we're going to extrude it in a different way. We're going to go symmetrical extrusion. And even though it's a little bit of an asymmetric environment, since it's not perfectly in the center, we didn't set up a... We could have set up a work plane right in the center of the spur gear to do it as symmetric. Actually, we can go we can go single direction. This would work just as well. Let's go ahead and make this uh, 3.5 inches. Uh, a little bit too long. Let's go 2.5. Yeah, that should be good. All right. Now the only difference is that it automatically will will place a uh, flush constraint here that we're going to remove for when we uh, create the um, key. So to create the key, just a simple little projection. So I'm going to create a work plane on the end of And the reason why I'm going to go to a three-dimensional view, so that way I can see where the work plane is going to be created. And yeah, I'm going to use it on the XY plane. 
and actually created it in the center which is perfect because that's where I need the next sketch to be. So I'm going to create the next sketch right on this work plane and I'm going to project the keyway or the key portion of the object and I'll project the cylinder back to the home view and I'll flip around to the front uh, sorry about that hope you took your Dramamine so here we are there's our keyway that we are the key that we need to add to um, the shaft so the the aspect is I could actually cut a keyway slot in the shaft which is perfectly appropriate um, in this case I'm just gonna create a, a bossed key on top um, for this to to be the drive mechanism for that to work I'm gonna go ahead and finish the sketch and extrude it this one is going to be a symmetrical extrusion so I do want to have symmetric and instead of two and a half inches we're gonna go ahead and make this um, oops about a half inch which will be perfect for our spur gear for the drive mechanism okay so now we're going to position the shaft now that I've got the key positioned on the shaft for the spur gear I'll then move or relocate the shaft for that to occur I need to return back to the assembly and get out of the actual new shaft part so now that I'm back you'll notice that as I mentioned earlier there's this flush constraint on the shaft let's go ahead and delete it that allows me to move the shaft freely if it wasn't uh, removed I wouldn't be able to move it away from the face of the spur gear so realistically what do I need to do I need to add a couple of constraints could I use the insert constraint possibly but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a constraint do a center line again to ensure that it's going to be applied uh, on the center line environment and then I'm gonna use a flush constraint and make the side of the key flush to the face of the spur gear let's see if that works it does let's go ahead and cancel and check things out let's see if let's turn the visibility off here on the other plate let's see if the very good so that half inch thickness is exactly the size that we needed for that drive key to be positioned properly so let's go ahead and add the visibility back to the two plates does it still turn uh oh it no longer turns so now we've got to figure out why it doesn't turn could it be because of that flush that we added to the key or is it because the shaft was created from the spur gear let's go ahead and turn this flush off and we won't delete the constraint we're just gonna suppress it so if we suppress that constraint does it turn no what if we made it unadaptive does it turn yes alright so far so good now the one thing that we don't have we don't know if the shaft is turning so let's go ahead and turn the visibility back off here look inside and see if the shaft spins along with it it doesn't so let's turn the flush back on by unsuppressing the suppress all right so we still have an issue because the shaft doesn't mate with 
the spur gear. Why not? Well, because the edges aren't there. So I'm going to go ahead and flip it around to the other side. And since we made it this surface flush, since we made it the this surface flush, let me go ahead and turn the visibility off here also. Since we made it this surface flush, and spin this around so you can see it, to the actual shaft, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a constraint so the two edges, the edge on the key and the edge on the key way, are put together. So one of the things that we can do is take an edge. So I'm going to take the edge to the edge and make sure that they align. And since this was the side that we made flush, the alignment should be without any problem. Now what happens is, is that the shaft turns with the spur gear. So don't get alarmed when things don't turn or move. Always check it. As you add additional constraints, always check that, uh, that movement. Let me go ahead and re-add our other objects back.